Hello everyone, welcome back for lecture 14, part one. Where in this section, we're going to talk, we're going to do an energy balance practice problem. And we're also going to talk about reading steam tables, which are going to be really useful when we want to obtain information on enthalpy, the enthalpies of enthalpies, internal energies, or specific volumes of water at a variety of conditions, both in the liquid state, but also in the vapor state. So let's jump into it. So we've got our, our practice problem here where a fuel is burned with, an, with air in a boiler furnace. The combustion produces 813 kilowatts of thermal energy, of which 65% is transferred as heat to the boiler tubes that pass through the furnace. The combustion products pass from the furnace to a stack at 650 degrees Celsius. Water enters the boiler tubes at 20 degrees Celsius and leaves the tubes a saturated steam at 20 bar absolute. Calculate the mass flow rate at which steam is produced. So, okay, what we're gonna first do is we're gonna just try and, we're gonna start with our energy balance equation, and we're just gonna try and pick this apart to identify what are the terms that we still are gonna be working with and which terms we can eliminate. So, looking at this problem, if you look through all the text, we see that there's no discussion of some material that's changing in velocity, we, we don't see anything with regards to changes in potential energy. And for that reason, we can make this assumption that there is no change in kinetic energy nor potential energy. The next item that we can eliminate is our shaft work. And we can eliminate that because we see that there's no discussion on anything with a moving part and we're doing a combustion. So it makes sense that we're not, there's no, there's no, moving parts that would have shaft work. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try and pick through the rest of the problem to identify what is our Q term, what is our H term, and help us figure out that mass flow rate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this problem, but line by line. So the first, first line, a fuel is burned with air in a boiler furnace. And the only thing that we really got from that kind of was eliminating, let's say, the work term and feeling more comfortable saying that energy, kinetic and potential energy are zero. So that's all we got from that line. So I'm just gonna eliminate that. The next line, the combustion produces 813 kilowatts of thermal energy of which 65% is transferred as heat to the boiler tubes that pass through the furnace. And when reading this line, we see, we see the word heat. So that is an indication that we do have a Q term and that's great. However, we do need to interpret all this information we see. We see that we're producing 813 kilowatts of thermal energy, which is great. However, thermal energy is not necessarily the same as heat. And that's why we got to read a little bit further and see that of which 65% is transferred as heat. So when we see those two pieces together, that indicates that of the, all that energy that we're getting from the combustion, only 65% of it is being transferred as heat. We're gonna lose the rest of it to other forms of energy. So that, that tells us then for our Q term, it's going to be 60.65 times 813 kilowatts, which gives us 528.5 kilowatts for our heat transfer. Okay. Now, the next item that we're looking for, or we're gonna to go to the next line, and we see that the combustion products pass from the furnace to a stack at 650 degrees Celsius. Okay, now if we go back to the, the objective of this problem, we're looking for a mass flow rate at which steam is produced. So in this case, since I, I am, I'm focused only on the steam, this line about combustion products going from the furnace to the stack doesn't do a lot for me. So I'm just going to eliminate that and we're gonna move on to the next line where we see water enters the boiler tubes at 20 degrees Celsius and leaves the tubes as saturated steam at 20 bar absolute. And in that case, we see that it, there's nothing clear about that sentence that indicates that's an energy term. We need to dig a little bit deeper and think about this from the perspective of we have water at one state and then exiting the system, it's, uh, it's coming out as a different state. And when you look at it from that perspective, 
that sounds like there's a difference in the energetic state of our water. And therefore, since this is an open system, that would indicate that this is a change in enthalpy. So we, we then are going to look at, and so for our change in enthalpy, we're going to be looking at what is the change in energy state from state one to state two. So if we see, we see that water enters the boiler at two, uh, the boiler tubes at 20 degrees Celsius. So that's our, our initial state, state one, where we have water at 20 degrees Celsius. And then if you read a little further, you see that the tubes are, are um, that we see that state two is going to be saturated steam at 20 bar. And so those two pieces of information are going to help us out with our enthalpy. Now, I don't have an actual enthalpy number right now. I know that. We, we just know we're going from state one to state two, and that's it. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get those enthalpy values. How do we do that? Well, there, there are some tables called the steam tables, which have a lot of information on water. And within that information, they've got enthalpy, they've got internal energy, and they've got specific volume for water at a variety of states. And there's a few different types of tables, depending on, again, what state you have. So if you have water, there's specifically uh, water tables, and then there's also steam tables. And, so, and within the tables, there's a little bit of an overlap between some of the water information and the seam information. So on this, uh, on this slide, I've got one of, the, one of the steam tables, and this is one where we're, we're going to be able to obtain the information about our water. And so as a reminder, we have for state one, water at 20 degrees Celsius. So when we're reading this, we're going to look for the import, we're going to look for information that matches what we want. So as I said before, we're looking for an enthal enthalpic state. Okay, so I found that on the table. We also know that we're dealing with water right now. So I'm going to the water column. And we also know that we're looking for a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So now if I look and line everything up, we're gonna see that 83.9 kilojoules per kilogram is water's enthalpy. And so that's our state one enthalpy. Great, and just so you know, this is available on Canvas. If you go to Files, Resources, FR, Steam Tables, that, that has all these different tables in there, and that's what I'm gonna recommend you go use when you're solving these problems and you need enthalpic information. Okay, so now we've got state one. We now need to get state two. And for state two, we're gonna use a different Steam Table that has information for steam. So for state two, remember we have saturated steam at 20 bar. So again, we're gonna look for the state we want. So in this case, we're looking for saturated steam and we're going to look for our pressure, which is 20 bar. And again, we're just gonna go across and down the diagram till we find our enthalpy state. And so for state two, we have a, an enthalpy of 2797.2 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, if you look closely at the steam table, you notice that there's a, a, a set of stairs. And I'm gonna outline that a little bit more so it's clear. So you see the set of stairs. What does the set of stairs indicate? It, it tells you that there are two different phases. You're, you have two different phases. So uh, when you're underneath the stairs, you have a liquid state. And when you're above the state, the stairs, you have a vapor state. And that makes sense because as you increase pressure, you're more likely to have liquid rather than vapor. And as you increase temperature, you're more likely to have vapor than liquid. Another little cheat you can do is if you look for the specific volumes, you can see that for liquids, they have very low specific volumes because it's volume per mass. And for the vapors, they have very high specific volumes. Again, because it's volume per mass. And if you know, like for example, Water has a specific, uh, water has a density of a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So if you invert that for the specific volume, it's going to be 0 0.001. And so that's just a little reminder so you can figure out which one is the liquid section and which one's the vapor section. All right, so going back to this problem now, we have figured out our enthalpy states and we can now solve for our unknown flow rate. So we've got, we're gonna calculate the flow rate, steam produced. We know that we have our energy, uh, our heat, is gonna equal our change in enthalpy. We know Q is 528.5 kilowatts. State one of, for enthalpy is 83.9 kilojoules per kilogram. 
and state two is 2797.2 kilojoules per kilogram. We also know since we have specific enthalpies, this is on a per mass basis. So our enthalpy term is really going to become m dot times specific enthalpy. And so we can then do m dot times h final minus h initial, where again, our final state is state two, our initial state is state one. And so we can substitute those values in, and then we'll have the m dot, uh, or q is m dot is equal to m dot times 2,713 2, kilojoules per kilogram. So we can then rearrange our, our problem and have m dot equals q dot over delta h. We can substitute in our values, and ultimately we're going to get an m dot equal to 0.194 kilograms per second. All right. Great, and so what I wanted to do now that we've gone through this problem and we started to talk about the steam tables is do a little bit more steam table practice just for reading it and extracting more information. And so just, uh, just uh, uh, an important term, saturated steam is produced when water is heated to the boiling point and then vaporized with additional heat. So it's just the amount of energy you need for you to boil, to boil all your water up to, or heating all your water to the boiling point and then getting everything to vaporize. It is the bare minimum to get steam. That is saturated steam. So if you remove any little bit of energy, you're going to get a water droplet. And so for us today, we're gonna to look for, we're gonna look at our steam tables again and look for different enthalpies. So for A, we'll look at temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and, and, a, and a P of 10 bar, that's superheated steam. We're going to look for also a pressure of 10 bar and saturated steam. And for C, we're going to look for a temperature of 250 degrees C and a P equal to 7 bar. So going back to our steam tables, we again are looking for our first state of 250 degrees Celsius and 10 bar. So we look for the temperature first, we find 250, look for the pressure, we have 10 bar. We go all the way across and we've got our first enthalpy, it's 2,943. All right, great. So moving on to our next, our next state, we've got 10 bar and it's saturated steam. So we can look for our state, which is saturated steam, and then look for our pressure, it's 10. And again, just go across the table and we find that it's 2,776.2 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, great. And now moving on to part C. T is 250 degrees Celsius. We see a pressure of seven bar. And so again, we're gonna look for our temperature. We find 250 degrees Celsius. We look for the pressure. And now if you look carefully along the y along the y-axis for pressure, you're gonna notice something. You're gonna notice that there's no seven bar. There's only five and 10 bar. And in this case, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to interpolate. So we're gonna have to do some math to find what seven bar is. So we're, we're gonna make a line and kind of Using a linear relationship between five and 10, we're going to look for what seven bar theoretically will be. And so for that, we're going to need the information, the enthalpies at five bar and 10 bar. So we'll go all the way across and we find our values of 2,961 for five bar and 2,943 for 10 bar. So going back, we're gonna do some interpolating and we've got an interpolation equation and so it's, it's a general equation that you can manipulate to whatever interpolating problem you're trying to solve, where you have y naught minus yl times xh minus xl divided by yh minus yl plus xl equals x x naught. Okay, and so the h's and l's are the high and the low values. And so the, it's not it's not whatever the highest value out of the two is, it's more your coordinates, so if you pick one of the values to be your high. For example, if you pick the one, you know what, it'll be easier if I show you. So, so for example, I picked, the, I picked the pressures to be my low and high values. So my YL is five bar, the, the enthalpy corresponding with five bar is 2,961. Then if we look at YH, it's our 10 bar, and we're looking at the X that's correlate, corresponding with 10 bar which is 2,943. And so our X naught, our Y naught is seven bar, 
we're trying to figure and x naught is the enthalpy we're trying to figure out at seven bar. So based on this information, we're going to substitute our values in. So we have seven bar minus five bar times 2,943 minus 2,961 divided by 10 bar minus five bar plus 2,943 kilojoules per kilogram equals x naught. Okay, and if you pay close attention, you, you notice that the bar units will cancel out because I have one in the numerator, one in the denominator. And so I'm left with my, my, enth my, enth uh, my specific enthalpy term, kilojoules per kilogram. And so essentially that middle section, XH minus XL divided by YH minus YL, that is kind of, that's a, that's a line equation. And so you're, you're using the slope and figuring out how far along the slope you need to go to get your desired value. And the, the, X, the, the extra, the XL you're adding at the very end, that's just to adjust based on, okay, I, I need to go this far on my slope and then it adjusts you based on what the lowest value was. And so that's gonna give you, uh, for this case, our X naught is 2,953.8. And I think this is gonna make a little bit more sense once you get to do some practice. So I just wanted to go through one round of it interpolating just so you see this procedure, and then you'll get some practice for this next in-class assignment. And so now just to recap for part one, we got to do a practice problem. We talked about steam tables and we talked about interpolating. And now uh, for part two, we're gonna do another practice, we're gonna do another practice problem and just talk about state functions and how we can take advantage of those. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you for part two.